Hello and welcome to this video presentation. My name is Paul Brett. I'm a senior software support analyst supporting the Transformation Extender product from IBM. The topic for this video is using automation during an ITX migration. Feel free to follow me on popular social media channels at Paul Brett IBM. In this practical demonstration, I'll be showing you the export import process for type trees, map sources, and integration flow designer documents. I'll show you how to use the type tree analysis tool, T-Analyze. We will also go through the map source compiler, mCompile. And finally, I will show deployments using the WinSCP tool in command line mode. We will start this demonstration by showing you my maps folder, which I'm viewing on a remote machine, where I have a type tree, a .mtt file, and a map source file, test.mms. You can see that these files were created in a much earlier version of ITX. This file, for example, opens up in WebSphere Transformation Extender 8.1. The same goes for the type tree. We're now going to move on to a machine that does not have 8.1 on it, but does have ITX 10.1, and we're going to walk through the migration steps using scripts. Back on my main computer now, and I have the same folder open, t colon backslash migration automation backslash maps, and we have our map source file.mms and our type tree.mtt. I'm going to go through one of the scripts, the migrate type tree.cmd first. I've opened it up in WordPad here so that we can see the content quite clearly. On the first line, if there's a backup file already, the entire thing is going to abort, uh, tell you that the backup already exists, which indicates that perhaps the migration has happened already. And then we set a couple of variables, DTX home, pointing to my ITX 10.1 installation. We make a note of the path before we start this process. Then we set the path to add the DTX home directory to the beginning of it. We have a couple of echo statements here to let you know what we're doing. Echo migrating type tree, creating a backup. And then on this line here, that's exactly what we're doing. We're creating a backup of the type tree before we start. Then another echo line to let you know that we're exporting the type tree to an MTS file. And here's where we call the first ITX command line tool, texport. After creating the MTS file, the type tree file.mtt is deleted at this step. Now obviously this script could do with some more checks to ensure that the texport finished successfully but this is what I've got so far. We have another echo command telling you that we're importing the MTS file as the type tree. We're using the ITX command line tool timport here to import the MTS script. This percent squiggle n1 indicates that we should take the name of the file of the parameter that we passed in for parameter number one, but just the name, so not the extension and it adds uh, .mts to it because that will be what was created in this step. We get another echo statement, analyzing new type tree, and we call the tanalyze itx tool to analyze the type tree. In the next step, we delete some temporary files that were created, the DBE, the back, and the MTS. And finally, we set the path back to what it was as we started this script. So let's run through that one now. I have my command line op open already here, and we're going to call migrate type tree.cmd and pass in as a, an argument generic.mtt. The script runs through, and as you can see, all the echo statements are producing content. We have the export successful there, we have the analyzing successful here, and the import happened in this middle step here. So if we look in our file window, we will note that we still have a generic.mtt. This is now the version that has been redone for ITX 10.1. And the .backup file is the old file that was done with 8.1. OK, so that's the type tree script. Let's move on in the next step to the map source. 
We'll drag the map source script to my WordPad document and go through it line by line. Okay, we start with a couple of checks. So we're checking for a backup again, and if it already exists, it tells you that it's going to abort. And on the second line, that's where it actually jumps to the end here and aborts because the backup already exists. Assuming the backup doesn't exist, the path is altered to include the ITX 10.1 installation, while at the same time, I'm making a note of what the old path was. We have an echo statement telling me that we're migrating map source percent one to percent one. This is the argument that's passed in, which will be test.mms. We have an echo statement here saying that we're going to create a backup of test.mms as test.mms.backup. And in this copy statement here, that's exactly what we're doing. We've got an echo statement here saying that we're exporting test.mms as test.xml. Now we're using this percent squiggle n1 just to capture the name of the file without the extension and adding on .xml here. So in my m export command, which is the first ITX utility, we are exporting the map and it automatically creates the .xml extension. In the next step, we're deleting the original map source test.mms. Then we have an echo statement saying that we're going to import the XML back to an MSS. And then we use the ITX command line tool mimport to do exactly that. We're using the percent squiggle n1 to capture the name of the first argument that we passed in without the extension with .xml on the end, which was the file created by the mexport command up here. We then have an echo command saying that we're going to compile the new map source and we call the mcompile command. This compile command is going to compile for Windows, the file that's passed in and all maps included within it. This line is a bit of cleanup to delete all the .mme, the .back and the .xml files. And finally, we're going to set the path back to what it was at the end. So in our command prompt window, let's run through those steps now. Migrate map source is the script we're running. Test.mms is the file we're going to pass into it. And here we can see the exporting command is happening. Map has exported successfully. The import command is happening. The import was successful. And here we're having the compile happening. And we have two maps have been compiled, blob and test1 back to our file window and you can see that we have those compiled maps blob and test1. We have our test.mms, this is the 10.1 version of the map source file with the .backup has been saved in there, that's the original 8.1 if we need to go back to it. For the next step we're going to run the compile and deploy script. We'll drag that script into our WordPad now to have a look at it. A little bit simpler this script, we set the ITX home directory we also set a winscp home directory. We make a note of the path as it was before we started this process. And then we change the path to prepend the ITX and the winscp directories to the front of the path. Then we have an echo statement telling you what we're doing. Compiling all maps in map source percent one, which is test.mms in this case. Now we are compiling that file. We are compiling all maps within it, but this time we're saying for the platform Linux. When the compile is done, we are deleting some files that we don't need anymore, the MME, any back files, and an XML file if it exists. Another echo statement saying that we're deploying all maps to Linux. I'm then using a winscp command with the forward slash script equals to point to a script that I have that will automatically copy these files to my Linux box for me. And in the final step, we are changing the path back to what it was before we started. Let's have a quick look at this script for WinSCP. As you can see, I have three commands in there. We are opening an SCP connection using my username and I have a replaceable password string here to my box called FTP. We are then using a put command to send the map test1.lnx. You'll note I'm only sending one map in this script. I'm not interested in blob at this time. And the remote path is shown here. And the final command is just an exit to exit the script. So let's run that one in our command window now. 
compile and deploy.cmd. And as you can see, the map was compiled for Linux. Looking on our file window, we now have blob.lnx and test1.lnx. And as you can see, WinSCP successfully transferred my test1.lnx to my remote Linux box, ready for execution. That is the end of this demonstration. I hope to add additional detail to the video description that includes the content of these scripts and hopefully you'll be able to modify them to enable you to migrate your own project. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my video presentation today. If you found the content interesting and informative, please hit that like button. Consider subscribing to my YouTube channel as I release content such as this on a regular basis. Feel free to reach out to me on popular social media channels at Paul Brett IBM. Thank you.